Well folks, we're at the stage now where lockdown restrictions are easing a bit and life is gradually changing and over the next few weeks we'll be able to um, get back into uh, doing many of the things that we've missed over the past few months and in church uh, we should be able to get back meeting together in some shape or form over the next uh, few weeks. So we have lots to be thankful for at this time. Uh, but one of the the things that uh, worries me slightly at this time is that uh, we might all just uh, suddenly slip back and revert back into all the old behaviours and routines without actually taking time to think too much about that. If we do that, we might forget some of the valuable lessons uh, about life and about uh, God that we've learned over the last few months. We might miss out on a, a God-given opportunity to learn and to, to grow. Now is a great time actually for us as individuals and as a church body to uh, think about how we live and to make choices about how we live. Are we simply going to re-establish all our old patterns except we'll do them two metres apart? Are we going to return to normal? Or the new normal, as people are talking about. Again, with uh, life as it was, just with a few changes. Or maybe we're just going to return to our lives in the same patterns and routines as before. And before long we'll know it, this will just be a distant memory. Maybe God has given us an opportunity to examine what he wants us to be. And what he wants us to do as individuals and as a church. I'm sitting here in the man's field. Why? Not just because it's a nice background. But because it's a, a verse I want to, to speak about and, and lead you to. A verse found in 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9. It's only a few words, part of a verse. It says we are God's field. The church. We are God's field. God's field. A place where God owns us. It's his fields where he grows his crops. A place where we're planted together. Not just individuals but a church planted together. And the whole purpose of having a field is to grow so that it bears fruit and crops. Our lives separately and together. Our whole purpose is actually to grow, to flourish, to give God glory. Remember the first catechism? Our purpose is to glorify God and enjoy him forever. If that is the primary purpose of life, then how do we shape our lives individually and together as a church how do we shape our lives to make sure that we're growing the best fruit? To grow lives that actually glorify God, that get the most enjoyment and pleasure and wonder out of life. How do we live individually? How do we function together as a body in church? So over the next few uh, days and weeks, I want to pick up this theme and ask you to think and look at different aspects of what it means. Things like putting down roots, pruning, what fruit it is we're to bear. All these kind of ideas that come from this theme. But to begin with today, I simply want you to invite you to say a prayer. Not just say a prayer, but actually devote yourself to this prayer. To say it in a way that's is from the heart that you commit to this prayer. So this is the prayer. Dear God, you are the vine and we are the branches. I ask that you would grow your life in me. I want to flourish and thrive and bear good fruit. I ask that you would grow your life in us. Help us as your church to flourish and bear good fruit. Speak to us over the next few weeks. Fill us with spiritual life 
and vitality. All for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. So I'd love you to commit to that prayer, to the sentiment of that prayer, to the heart of that prayer. And pray with me and pray with one another that God would indeed build us, build new things in us and around us and among us and with us. Build his kingdom in new ways in the days, weeks, months and years to come.